Good day, students. Welcome to Cool Serious Art School's online class. For today, we will be learning about science for primary four. But before we move on to our topic, I want to introduce myself first. I am teacher Layla. Again, can you repeat my name? I am teacher Layla. Okay, good job. Now, are you ready for our lesson for today? For today's lesson, we will be learning about parts of a plant. Okay, now, I want to ask you first, do you have any idea on what are the different parts of a plant? If no, then we will learn it today. But first off, I want you to grab your Inside Out Science 4 book and turn it to pages 1 to 10. Again, I want you to grab your Inside Out Science 4 book and turn it to pages 1 to 10. Okay, I will wait for you. Okay, do you already have it with you? If yes, then let's start. What are we going to learn? So in today's lesson, we are going to learn the different plant parts. What is roots? what is stem what is leaves what is flower and what is fruits furthermore we will also learn what are the functions of roots and what are the two types of fruits apart from that we will also learn what are the functions of of stems what are the two transport tubes namely xylem and phloem and we will differentiate them later okay Furthermore, we will have a science experiment and we will also learn what are the function of leaves. What's the difference between chlorophyll, stomata, and transpiration? We will also learn about photosynthesis. I know that some of you are already familiar with photosynthesis, but we will discuss them briefly in the upcoming slides, okay? And lastly, we also have another science experiment, okay? So, in this lesson, we have two science experiments, so watch out for that, okay? Okay, so first off, we will discuss the different parts of the plant. So, as you can see in here in the picture, I have there a picture of a tomato plant and it is labeled with the different parts of the plant okay so let's see them one by one okay the first one is the roots okay so in this picture the roots is this one okay so this is the roots okay the next part is the stem okay so the stem is this green stalk right here okay and the next one is the leaves okay so these are the leaves of this plant as you can see there we have a lot of leaves okay and the next part of a plant is a flower okay in this case we don't have the flower but we have the fruit okay so the fruit is the tomato itself okay so these are the different parts of the plant okay so know that i have mentioned in here five parts of the plant but in this lesson we will only focus on the roots stem and the leaves okay so now let's proceed let's define what is roots okay so roots are hair like organ structure of a plant that typically lie below the surface of the soil okay so if you will go back to our picture a while ago the soil is in the soil okay again the roots is in the soil that's why it says here it is a hair-like organ because if you would look at the picture closely as you can see there okay it looks like hair okay small hairs structure of a plant that typically lie below the surface of the soil okay now let's discuss what are the functions of the roots why do plants have roots okay the first one is that roots absorb water from the soil. Okay, I have a question. When you are watering a plant, where do you usually directly put the water? Is it on the leaves or on the roots of the plant? Who says leaves and who says roots? Okay, 
the correct answer is in the roots okay so because there is no sense in watering the plants if you directly put the water on the leaves because the roots is what absorbs the water okay so that is the first function of roots it absorb water from the soil and the second function of root is they hold the plant firmly to the ground okay so imagine if plants don't have roots in them there will be nothing to hold them in the ground and they will fall okay and the last function of roots is a storage of food and nutrients okay so since roots actually absorb water from the soil it also is a storage for food and nutrients okay so what are the two types of fruits okay so as you can see in here i have here a picture okay now what are the two types of fruits the first one is a fibrous root okay or the fibrous root system when we say fiber it's like tiny hair or tiny root hairs that actually look like fiber okay so let's define what is a fibrous root okay so as you can see in a picture this is a picture of a fibrous root okay it's like small hairs okay there are a lot of fibrous hair and not fibrous root in this picture right here okay so when we say fibrous root it forms a dense network of roots that is closer to the soil surface example of plants that have the fibrous root system are grasses such as wheat rice and corn okay so wheat rice and corn are grasses that therefore they have the fibrous root system and a fibrous root looks like this one okay dense meaning a lot okay now what is the second type of root okay so the top root the top root system has a single main root that goes down as you can see in here this is an example of a top root as you can see we only have one main root that goes down okay so this is an example of a top root so if you can see here the difference between a top root and a fibrous root the fibrous root has a lot of roots whereas a top root only has one main root okay example of a top root includes tuber plants such as carrots and radish okay so these are example of top root plants okay now let's proceed let's proceed to the second part of the plant which is the stems or stem when we say stem it is the stalk that supports a leaf flower or fruit it is the main body of that portion of a tree shrub or other plant which is above ground as you can see in here we have a picture of a stem okay so if we will go back to our picture a while ago in our first part as you can see in here in this tomato flower or tomato plant the stem is this long stalk right here okay so this is a stem okay now let's go back okay now what are the two types of stem the first type of stem is called the herbaceous stem when we say herbaceous stem, the stem of herbaceous plants are soft and flexible and are found typically on annuals such as most, most vegetables that grow only for one season. Okay, again, the first type of stem is the herbaceous stem. Okay, can you repeat after me? Herbaceous stem stem okay very good when we say herbaceous stem these are very soft and very flexible and it is usually found in plants just like vegetables okay and the second type of stem is a woody stem when we say woody stem it is a plant that produces wood as its natural tissue okay woody plants are usually either trees shrubs or lianas these are usually perennial plants when we say by the way when we say annual it only grows for one season and when we say perennial it grows for two or more seasons okay 
These are usually perennial plants whose stems are larger roots are in forms or reinforced with wood produced from secondary salem. As you can see in the picture, the difference between herbaceous stem and a woody stem. Okay, so again, when we say herbaceous, very soft and flexible. But when you say woody stem, it is very hard and very stiff. It cannot be bent right away. Okay, so that is the difference between a herbaceous stem and a woody stem stem okay so let's have example of both okay so i have here with me example of herbaceous plant stem the first one is a corn plant okay so a corn plant has soft and flexible stem and the next one is a squash plant okay so just like corn plant squash plant also has a herbaceous plant stem okay now we have here on the other side is the woody plant stem and for our first example we have a coconut tree okay as you can see here this is an example of a woody because the coconut tree has a very stiff very strong stem compared to a corn and to a squash plant okay and the next one is a rose plant okay just like coconut tree a rose plant has a woody type of stem okay so we are done with the two parts of the plant okay so the first thing that we discuss is the roots the roots has two types we have the fibrous roots which is found in grasses just like corn and rice and the second one is the is the top root which is found in carrots or radish okay now the second plant part that we discuss is this one it is the stem okay now a stem has two types as well we have the herbaceous which is made out of soft and flexible plants and we have the woody stem with which is made out of strong and stiff plants just like tree and rose okay so so far those are the things that we've discussed okay i hope so now that we are done discussing stems and its two types, I have prepared here a video for you to watch. So listen carefully. The video will explain the difference between xylem and phloem and we will discuss it after you view the video. Okay, so enjoy watching! Transport of water and food in plants. Observe a leaf of a plant in your surrounding. You must have noticed that the leaf has veins. In a leaf, each vein is made up of xylem and phloem meant for transporting materials in plants. Xylem and phloem are found in vascular bundles. There are many vascular bundles in a plant body. Xylem vessels carry water and mineral salts from the root hairs to the leaves. Phloem vessels carry manufactured food in a soluble form from the leaves to the various parts of the plant body including the roots. Now you can well understand why leaves are richly supplied with vascular bundles. So in the video we mentioned there xylem and phloem. Now let's discuss what is the difference between a xylem and a phloem, okay? So I have here with me a picture of a stem structure. Okay, so xylem. What is xylem? Xylem transports water and minerals from the roots to the leaves. Okay, so I want you to take note of that. Xylem transports food and minerals from the roots to the leaves. Okay, now we have the second one. Phloem. Okay, phloem transports fruit food from the leaves to the rest of the plant okay so that is the main difference between these two if we say xylem it transports 
water and minerals from the roots to the leaves. But when we say phloem, it transports food from the leaves to the rest of the plant. Okay, so take note between the difference of this two. Okay, now let's proceed. Okay, so we have here a science experiment. So as I have mentioned a while ago in this lesson, we will have two science experiment. But we will not conduct them right now. But what I want you to do is to go to the link that is in here. Okay, watch this celery experiment on YouTube and see how the person did this experiment. And when you go back from school in our regular class, we will all do it together. Okay, so enjoy watching. Okay, now let's proceed. The third part of the plan that we are going to discuss is the leaves. Okay, so remember we already done discussing about the roots and the stem. Now we are about to discuss the leaves. What do we know about the leaves? Okay, so what is a leaf? Okay, or a leaves? Leaves is a part of a plant that is usually green and attached to it by a stem or a stalk. Now, now I want to ask a question. Have you seen a leaf that is black in color or red or orange in color? Okay, so greens are actually usually just color green, right? What is the reason behind this color? Okay, so we will explain that later in this lesson okay so again leaves is a part of a plant that's usually green and attached to it by a stem or a stalk okay so what are the functions of leaves are they just accessories or do they do something for the plant okay so we will discuss that one okay so the first function of a leaf is to manufacture food through photosynthesis okay we will discuss photosynthesis later in the video okay the second one is gas or air exchange which is also called respiration and the next one is water transport or what we call transpiration and the last one is store food during germination okay so these are the four functions of the leaves it manufactures food through photosynthesis it is for gas or air exchange which is also called respiration it is also for water transport or what we call transpiration and it also store food during germination okay very good i hope that you are taking notes of all of the things that we are discussing for today okay now let's proceed okay so i have prepared here another video okay so this video will explain photosynthesis okay so you know the drill just like what we did a while ago i want you to listen carefully to the video okay let's start did you enjoy the video if yes then let's discuss the content of the video okay so we will simplify that everything that has been said in the video now what is photosynthesis based on the video it says there that photosynthesis is the process by which plants make food from sunlight okay it also said there that photo came from the greek word meaning life and synthesis came from the greek word means putting together okay so let us simplify the process of photosynthesis okay so photosynthesis takes place when there is water plus carbon dioxide and light okay so take note that without this tree photosynthesis will not take place okay now i have here chlorophyll in the video it was also mentioned there chlorophyll chlorophyll is the green pigment found in plants okay and the next one once water carbon dioxide and light combine together they will produce glucose okay so glucose is the byproduct of photosynthesis glucose is a type of carbohydrates which is used by plants in order to produce energy and when plants have enough energy they will be able to perform their functions okay now once plants have already performed their functions with the use of glucose or by utilizing glucose they will then produce 
oxygen okay so oxygen is needed by human and animals in order for them to live okay so if plants need carbon dioxide for photosynthesis plants and animal needs oxygen to be alive okay so as you can see there there is a direct relation between plants human and animals okay okay so we mentioned their chlorophyll okay so chlorophyll is defined as the green pigment found in plants remember i asked you a while ago why do most leaves actually is color green okay so this is the answer okay because most plants have this chlorophyll that gives them the green pigment okay and chlorophyll also allows the leaves to drop light energy from the sun okay so just like water carbon dioxide and sunlight chlorophyll also helps in photosynthesis among plants okay next stomata okay stomata are tiny openings on the underside of the leaves they allow carbon dioxide oxygen and water to move in and out of the leaves okay so stomata was also mentioned in the video a while ago okay stomata are usually open when there is light and closed when there is or when it is dark okay so usually stomata among plants open during the morning and they are closed during night time okay so that is the function of stomata another one stomata also allows transpiration to occur now let's define what is transpiration in order for you to understand stomata more okay transpiration is the loss of water vapor through leaves okay so transpiration is actually a wasteful but important process among plants in the process of transpiration the plants actually loses some of its water but it is essential for the plant to perform its other function okay so that is transpiration as you can see in here we have a picture showing how transpiration works okay so remember that roots absorb the water so most of the water are stored in the roots now when transpiration occurs roots come up from the roots to the stem and evaporates through the leaves as you can see in here this is the roots this is the stem and this is the leaves okay so from the roots the water moves up to the stem and out into the leaves okay so that is the process of transpiration okay next one another science experiment okay so for this second science experiment it is an iodine test for starch in leaves okay so just like the first one a while ago i want you to click this link right here on or find this video on youtube and watch it by yourself and once we go back from school we will perform this all together and see how it works okay okay so that's all for our discussion now let's proceed to answering your yellow book okay so let's practice now what i want you to do is to grab your yellow books and on your yellow book write their activity one write your name their class number the day to day and your score if we ever check it on your zoom meeting okay and number it one to ten okay so for this activity what i want you to do is to just write the question and your answer on your yellow book and we will answer it all together on our zoom meeting okay so we have here direction okay direction multiple choice write the question and the choices and circle the letter of the correct answer again let me repeat the direction write the question and the choices and circle the letter of the correct answer okay i don't want to see an x in there okay i only want to see a circle okay so you'll have to circle the letter of the correct answer if it's a b c or d and also don't forget to write there the question okay now let's start for number one plant is a type of fruit system that has a dense network of fruits 
that is closer to the soil surface. An example includes grasses such as rice. Again, let me repeat. Blank is a type of root system that has a dense network of roots that is closer to the soil surface. An example includes grasses such as rice. What is the answer? Is it letter A, roots? Letter B, fibrous roots? Letter C, tap root? Or letter D, adventitious root? Did I mention our lesson, adventitious root? Okay, you'll have to find out, okay? For number two, blank is a type of stem that are soft and flexible and are found typically on animals such as most vegetables. Again, black is a type of stem that are soft and flexible and are found typically on animals such as most vegetables. Okay, so you already have there your keyword soft and flexible. Is it letter A, shrubs, letter B, vines, Letter C, herbaceous stem, or letter D, woody stem. Okay, so write your answer on your yellow book. Next one, number three. A coconut tree stem belongs to what type of stem? Again, a coconut tree stem belongs to what type of stem? Okay, so remember we discussed a while ago the two types of stem, right? We have the herbaceous and the woody type of stem. Now, where does coconut tree stem belong? Is it A, shrubs, B, vines, C, herbaceous stem, or letter D, woody stem? Okay, so again, write your answer on your yellow book. For number four, Blank is a stem structure that transports water and minerals from roots to the leaves. Again, let me repeat. Blank is a stem structure that transports water and minerals from the roots to the leaves. Okay, so your keywords there are roots to the leaves. What is it? Is it letter A, xylem? Letter B, phloem? Letter C, herbaceous stem, or letter D, woody stem. Okay, and for number five, blank is a process by which plants make food from sunlight. Blank is a process by which plants make food from sunlight. Is it letter A, pigment? Letter B, photosynthesis? Letter C, chemosynthesis or letter D, transpiration. Okay, now let's proceed to number 6. For number 6 to 10, the direction is true or false. Write D if the statement is true and F if the statement is false. Write your answer before the number. Again, let me repeat the direction. Write T if the statement is true or correct and write F if the statement is false or incorrect. Okay, so for number six, phloem transports food from the leaves to the rest of the plant. True or false? Phloem transports food from the leaves to the rest of the plant. True or false? Next one, stem are like are hair-like organ structure of a plant that typically lie below the surface of the soil. Again, let me repeat. Stem are hair-like organ structure of a plant that typically lie below the surface of the soil. Is it true or false? Okay. Okay, so for number eight, glucose is the byproduct of photosynthesis. Again, let me repeat. Glucose is the byproduct of photosynthesis. Is it true or is it false? Okay, write your answers on your yellow book. And for number nine, stomata are usually open when there is light and closed when it is dark. Again, stomata are usually open when there is light and close when it is dark. Is it true or is it false? Okay, for number 10, respiration is the process 
of loss of water vapor through the leaves. Again, let me repeat. Respiration is the process of loss of water vapor in through the leaves. Is it true or is it false? Okay? That concludes our discussion and your activity. Now, for your homework, I want you to grab your inside out workbook and answer activity 1, 2, and activity 3 on pages 1 to 2. Again, for your homework, I want you to grab your inside out workbook and answer activity 1, functions of fruits, activity 2, functions of stems, and activity 3, functions of leaves. That is on page 122. And for your additional assignment or your additional homework, I want you to watch the link for additional facts on the different functions of the leaves. Okay, so you can find these videos on YouTube. Okay, now let's have a recap. Okay, so for today or in today's lesson, we've learned about the different plant parts. The first part that we've learned is the roots. The roots are hair-like organ structure of a plant that typically lie below the surface of the soil. We have also learned the different types of roots. We have the first one which is the top root and the fibrous root. When we say fibrous root, this includes the plants that are grasses like rice and corn. When we say top root, these are plants like carrots and radish, okay? We also learned about the stem. The stem is the stalk that supports a leaf, flower, or fruit, okay? We've learned about the two types of stem, which is the herbaceous and the woody. For herbaceous stem, these are soft and flexible kind of stem. An example of this one is the squash plant. Okay, and the next one is the woody stem. When we say woody, these are hard and stiff stem. An example of this one is coconut tree or the rose plant. And the next one, we also learned about the two transport system in stem, namely xylem and phloem. When we say xylem, this transports water and minerals from the roots to the leaves and when we say phloem this is a transport system or transport stem that transports food from the leaves to the rest of the plant okay i hope you're taking notes of everything that we are learning today okay and the next stuff that we learn is the leaves okay the leaf or the leaves is a part of a plant that's usually green and attached to it by a stem or a stalk okay we learned that um, leaves has different function and that includes gas or air exchange water transport and storage of food during germination we also learn about stomata stomata are tiny openings on the underside of the leaves okay now for our next lesson we will be discussing about flowers and fruits okay so i want you to watch out for that video okay and we also learned about photosynthesis again when we say photosynthesis it is the process of making a food in plants okay and in photosynthesis we learned about or we learned that it is essential for photosynthesis to happen, we need water, carbon dioxide, and light. Okay, and glucose is the byproduct of photosynthesis. Okay, and once all of this has been utilized, the plant will be able to give off oxygen, which is essential for human and animals. Okay, so you can screenshot or take a photo of this mind map so you will be able to remember all of the things that we've learned for today's lesson easily okay okay so that has been all for today again this is teacher Layla, your science teacher for today and i'll see you on our next video and please remember to do your homework and your yellow book i'll see you guys soon and 
Bye.